for the second test to see that there is voltage getting to the motor, uh, what I've got is this is the plug from the control that, that the motor would plug into. And we're going to see if the PCM is going to give 12 volt signal to this after the car starts. Of course, the car is completely cold right now, so that I know after a few seconds after startup, I should be able to test these leads with my voltmeter here and see 12 volts on the voltmeter. If I do not, that would be indication that I'm going to have some kind of electrical problem to the motor. if we get some command from the PCM now. Alright, we can see that we've got battery voltage, so we would know that we're getting command to the air pump. Alright, for my next tests on top of the car, I'm going to disconnect. Actually, while I'm here, I can remove this check valve. And of course, it's a V engine, so we'd have to do the same on the other side. But um, what I've got here is this is, uh, if you can see it on my hand here, this is the air hose from the diverter valve to the left bank of the engine. So uh, we want to see if the diverter valve is working. But before I do that, since I wanted to get this check valve out of the way, what I'm going to do is the check valve goes in this direction. That means that air should only go this direction here. So let me flip this around so air should go only that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and blow into it and you can hear the air blows. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it around and I should not be able to blow air this way. Yep, nothing. So now what I want to do is test my diverter valve operation. So what I'm going to do is for the air tube from the diverter valve to that check valve that I just tested, I'm going to do a little extension hose here. I think I can get this hose to fit into that air hose just like that. Okay, so now this diverter valve should normally be closed here. So what I'm going to want to do is, um, because the thing is with the V engine, this hose uh, is actually going to connect to the hose on the other side of the engine on the other bank. So I'm going to want to clamp that hose first. And all I'm doing is just clamping off the hose to the um, opposite bank so that uh, I close off to the exhaust manifold there. And that is closed off. And this way, when I blow air into this hose, it can't just bypass the diverter valve and go into the opposite exhaust manifold. Um, also, actually, sucking on the hose tends to um, close the diverter valve, so you can test it that way without clamping, but I don't want to suck on this thing. So let's blow on it, see what happens. And, uh, well, I blew so hard, I blew my hose off here. But uh, let me put that back on. But the idea is that I could not blow through it. So that's good. It means the diverter valve is closed. Now, let's see if the diverter valve will actually open with vacuum. So here what I'm going to do is we can see at the top of the diverter valve there is a vacuum hose right there. And what I've done is I've just disconnected the other end from the solenoid. And I'm going to hook up a little extension vacuum tubing so that I'll be able to manually add vacuum to that diverter valve. There we go. like that. So when I add vacuum, it's going to add vacuum directly to the diverter valve and that of course should open it if the diverter valve is functioning. Okay, so once again, I cannot blow through the diverter valve, but when I add vacuum to open the valve, and hopefully you can hear that, I can blow vacuum through the diverter valve, which actually ultimately means that I'm blowing towards the air pump. And then take away the vacuum, and it stops. So we know that that diverter valve is functional. With the diverter valve functional, and of course we would also want to test by repeating the blowing all that and everything on the other bank as well, just to make sure there isn't some issue with the check valve or some clog or something. But right now at this point, 
Everything seems to be working. The diverter valve definitely works. However, we know that the diverter valve is not controlled with a hand vacuum pump in my blowing through it. The diverter valve is controlled by this solenoid right here. So the next thing we need to do now is test that solenoid. It seems to be the next logical thing in our progression because it's going to be a little tricky to test that. Obviously, testing that is going to involve me putting 12 volts to it and listening to it click. I do not rely on a click to validate the operation of a relay or solenoid. I rely on the fact that it also serves the operation, which would be that it would allow vacuum to pass through it. So what I am going to do is take my vacuum hose and I've got the vacuum hose from the solenoid now. I've removed it from the diverter valve and I'm going to attach my vacuum pump to the hose now from the solenoid like so okay and of course the solenoid should right now be closed so I'm gonna go ahead and apply vacuum and and we can see that I have vacuum there so the solenoid is closed as it should be there's no leaks in the solenoid so next what I want to do, and admittedly this may be a little tricky, I may have to just remove this solenoid out of here, but we'll see what I can do. I'm going to unplug the solenoid and see if I can get 12 volts uh, onto that solenoid, onto those solenoid contacts there. Okay, so I first want to just at least see if the solenoid clicks. So I've got a uh, jumper wire to negative, and then this of course is going to be my positive. And that'll be on the other contact. And that's one of the nice things about this power probe tool is it doesn't give me the 12 volts until I push the button up on the tool. So without pushing the button right now, I'm not worried about having a hot wire that can hit every possible ground in the way until I'm sure I'm in my region. So here I am. And I've got the microphone right next to it, so we should hear it click. And let me turn it on here. Okay, you can hear that it clicks. Good indication the solenoid works, but a better indication is going to be to do this. I'm going to set my vacuum pump right here. And let's see if we can keep that in the field of view. Okay, and I'll have to be quick because I don't have a good seal on my vacuum, but obviously if I activate this solenoid, the vacuum should immediately drop indicating the solenoid's open. And we see it does. So we know that that solenoid is operational correctly. Now, the only thing we don't know, is there computer control to that solenoid? Because if there is, we know that everything in the system works so far. This final test will again need to start up the engine, so I'll want to get my check valve and everything back in place, and we're just going to basically test to make sure we do get voltage to that solenoid. And um, what I wanted to do while I'm putting this all back together here is remind you, you've often heard me refer to what I call referenced codes in other videos. And that is when you get a code for something, but it's actually not related to the component that the code mentions. Uh, usually oxygen sensor codes are fairly notorious for this. And I just wanted to show you that if you really think about this system here, you have the potential for referenced codes. If, for example, I were to leave a hose open like this to the exhaust manifold, air could come into the exhaust manifold causing a lean condition on that bank. We might get a, uh, in this case it's bank two, so it'd be a P0173, I think it would be. And in that, actually it would be an 0174, I take it back, sorry. Um, so we would get an 0174, but the actual cause of the lean condition would have been from the air pump system. So it's important to remember how this system interacts with the rest of the mechanicals and electricals in the engine so that when you have a symptom like that, you can think of every system, every component that could be contributing to that check engine light code that you may not think of otherwise. And definitely an air system would be an example of that. And it's also important to know that uh, because, like with most systems, the 
when the air system uses the oxygen sensors to validate if you have any other existing codes related to the oxygen sensor, you will generally not get an air system code because it knows that the validation, the oxygen sensor, is questionable. So um, you know, sometimes you've got to be careful. You may have a situation where you fix a known problem like a vacuum leak or something like that. The whole time the car had an air system failure, but of course you didn't know that. And of course the car could come back as a comeback for a check engine light, but it would be for an air system code because of course the code never threw with the pre-existing problem. So sometimes you can get a little unlucky with that. All right, so for our final test, we're going to see if there's solenoid control. I'm going to go, I believe this is going to be my power wire here, so I'm just going to put a little sewing needle in there and make sure that that doesn't go anywhere near a engine ground. And then I'm going to connect my voltmeter up to that. All right, so I'm going to go one end of the voltmeter to a, a good ground. And just because that's a body ground, I just want to test by going to the battery positive that I do have voltage, and I do. So I'm going to go over to my power here, and we'll see if we get a signal. And, uh, well, actually, that's interesting. We uh, have a signal as it is already. And, of course, I, that's because I forgot. Uh, I, I'm sure this system is ground side controlled. So actually what I'm going to do is reverse my meter here. Um, I think what we can do is just go to continuity here and just check for if, they, if we get continuity to a ground. Um, so let's do that. So here we should not have continuity. Okay, and then once we get um, the power uh, to the solenoid, which would be ground side controlled, once that activates, we should see continuity there so it completes the power. So a little mess up there. It's very, it's very important to understand the electrical on this um, because this is ground side system. Obviously, uh, if I didn't know that, I could very well have misdiagnosed that we've got a power at all times and the solenoid would be open at all times. Maybe there's uh, some kind of issue with that, right? But actually there isn't. It's because the system works by closing the ground. The power always will have power and we're going to prove that in a second here. So uh, how important is that to know? Um, I may, if I have time, uh, go over that again at the end of the video just in case you're not following that but that is a critical thing to know so you don't misdiagnose this system. Let's get a good view of the meter here so that we can see because I anticipate some vibration from the engine and we should see that close um, and show continuity indicating the ground is completed by the PCM. Okay, and we can see that the ground was completed by the PCM. So pretty much the only things you would have left at this point would be checking the fuse, which of course I, you know, you just check the fuse. And then also the relay, and I have, I didn't show that because I have a separate diagnosis and understanding video on all about relay testing, because it's a little bit trickier than what you probably read in your forums and everything like that. So if you wanted to test the relay, I would refer you to the relay and testing video true to the series. It helps to keep the flow going to not repeat stuff so much. And if people already understand the material, then we just keep going. And if you don't, it's up to you to review what you need. But what we're going to do now is just one other thing. Uh, just in case you were curious, I was going to show you the easy way to do all of this. If you have a scan tool capable of bi-directional control, it's a lot easier to do this. And I'll just show you how this works when I set this up. So what I'm going to do here is show you the easy way to do this in case you have auto ingenuity or some bi-directional scan tool. Uh, you will generally, um, if you go to enhanced parameter mode here, uh, why is that? Because uh, I need my manual transmission. There we go. And we'll let this load up. All right, and what I can do is uh, down here on this particular program, I can choose all of these different things that I can turn on and off using the PCM. So obviously a couple of advantages here. 
first of all, the main advantage, I don't have to crawl under and use jumper wires and stuff like that like I was doing, but of course I do that because I know most of you guys don't have a bi-directional scan tool. The other advantage is by operating these, I know that there is connection, not only that the, the part works if it turns on, but that the connection to the computer for that part is also good. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone, saves a lot of time. I'm just gonna turn the air pump on and we'll listen for it. You heard the solenoid click and the air pump runs. And turn it off. So um, I hope you heard the solenoid click there too, but basically in in like a second right there, I just did the, uh, you know, almost the entire video um, pretty much. It still doesn't check the check valves and, you know, the vacuum to the solenoid and things like that. Remember also the vacuum line from the engine to that solenoid would need to be checked. So it doesn't really do that. But there's another thing that I think we might be able to do, and I'm not sure if this will work, but I'm going to go ahead and try this. What I'm going to do is see if I can start the engine, uh, get it warmed up, and then turn the air system on, and then we can look and watch the oxygen sensor response. If the oxygen sensor response was, as I said on the dry erase board of knowledge, and we see both banks lean out as a result, then we would know the air system works all around. And in that case, uh, we would be able to do our testing without any of that effort we did earlier. So let's see if that happens. Okay, so clearly we are in closed loop. We've got our oxygen sensors here. And what I'm gonna do is come down here and see if it will let me turn on the air system with the engine running. If it does, we would of course expect with the fresh oxygen directly into the exhaust manifolds, both banks would go lean as a result. And that would be very good indication the entire air system is working. Let's see if it happens. And it does, and we can see that they do go lean. I can hear the motor, the air motor working. And then uh, let's go ahead and turn that off and they should go rich again. I heard the motor turn off, so we should see a rich response and there it is. So that's actually pretty cool. Had we only seen the response in one bank, I would have obviously assumed that, you know, possibility with a check valve or a clog in one bank, I wouldn't have to take the whole system apart. Uh, or I would have assumed I have some problem with my scan tool since it's an enhanced mode, but that's a whole different inside joke for everybody else that knows what I'm talking about. So anyway, that worked out pretty well. Well, there you have it. Everything that I said would happen as a response from the PCM to the air system happened and every component was there. So we are done with that. So hopefully that helps you out. And like I said, I do believe I have a pretty good case study coming up where we'll just go off of these principles and just go right to the diagnosis next time. So at the time of this release, I want to wish you guys all a very Merry Christmas and Good New Year. And we'll see you again really soon. I wanted to also say thanks so much to everybody for your support and for your comments and for subscribing. Uh, almost 10,000 subscribers already. It wasn't even a year ago, not even a year ago that I was celebrating 1,000. So really wanted to take the opportunity to thank you guys. But I'll let you go. We'll see you again soon. Thanks.